This plant is called wintergreen and it's cool because it makes this sweet aroma that is called methyl salicylate. This is what us chemists call an ester because of this group of atoms here. Esters are pretty cool because they almost always smell good and they're easy as fuck to make. So since I'm shit at chemistry and stuck in my room editing all day, this is perfect. For the synthesis, we will need those chemicals displayed here. I start by measuring approximately 15 grams of salicylic acid. If you don't have it as a nice powder like me, you can always make it from aspirin with only one step. I did it on video like 2 years ago, but I was shit at YouTube, so watch Nile Red instead. Alright, so here we have 15 grams of salicylic acid. We pour our measured salicylic acid in a 500ml round bottom flask for later. Then we take a small beaker and measure 60ml of our second reagent, which is dry methanol. If you're poor and you don't have any methanol, you can also use some of the 90% of more ethanol to make a very similar ester called ethyl salicylate. According to Wikipedia, the smell is pretty similar, just make sure your ethanol is dry enough. You can make 90% ethanol from distilling carefully vodka or some other alcohol. I pour the methanol in the flask as well, and you can see that the salicylic acid dissolves very well in it while stirring. Yeah, it's, it's dissolving very fast. And finally, to make the reaction work, we will need what is called a catalyst. It's not a reagent, but if we don't add any, the reaction will take years or not even work sometimes. Our catalyst for this reaction is concentrated sulfuric acid, and we need approximately 5 ml of it. This time, I listened to y'all in the comments, begging me to use a glass rod to pour the acids, so fair enough, because pills can be annoying, so I'll use it this time. For some reason, the flask turned a sort of pink beige color, and I don't really know why, but anyway, now we're gonna add the sulfuric acid slowly with a pipette so that it doesn't make the methanol boil, which would be pretty bad because it's kinda toxic. When all the acid has been added, the flask has now turned this weird blue purple color for some reason. Anyway, I added a condenser on top of the flask to make a reflux apparatus. This will allow for the methanol solution to be boiling constantly without losing any methanol because it gets recondensed in the tube and dropped in the flask again. Now let's see what happens in the reaction. I don't really want to detail it too much because there are 5 steps, but basically, first the sulfuric acid catalyst generates a hydrogen ion which gets attacked by the acid function on the salicylic acid to form an intermediate which is attacked by the alcohol function and the methanol to form the main ester bond. Then a water molecule leaves and the H plus is restored at the end which means we still have the same amount of catalyst at the start and at the end. After 45 minutes of running, the reaction should be in theory finished, so I stop heating and let it cool down. In the meantime, we need to measure approximately 10 or 11 grams of sodium carbonate to neutralize the acid. When I add it to the flask, you can see that it doesn't react fast at all, and that's because it struggles a lot to dissolve in the mostly methanol solution. To neutralize the acid faster, I added some water and it worked very well because we get a lot of bubbling. Yeah, exactly. Alright. Now, after some time, most of the acid should be neutralized, and we should add a solvent called diethyl ether, but I don't have any at all, so instead I added what is called some dichromethane, and transferred everything into this separation funnel. The dichromethane, or DCM, is not soluble in water, but it should hopefully dissolve our product, and form a separate phase in a similar way, though our oil and water don't mix well. This will allow us to separate the product nicely. I shake and vent the funnel a few times, and then let it sit until the phases separate. For me, the bottom layer was the organic one, which seems very weird, but if it works, don't question it, I guess. I repeated this process a second time to obtain almost 70 ml of a solution of dichromethane and or methyl salicylate. By this point, the whole lab started to smell like it, which was pretty cool.
Now to get rid of any water at all that might be present in our DCM, we're gonna add a random amount of anhydrous calcium chloride, which will hold onto any water molecules present. I let it sit for a few hours and the solution looked much clearer after a quick filtration. Then I boiled down the dichloromethane, but I somehow don't have footage of this, sorry. After the DCM boiled away, I was pretty surprised and disappointed to get a solid paste, which is not a product obviously. I think this is mostly unreacted salicylic acid, but fortunately, when I tried to agitate the paste, it turned a bit more liquidy and I was able to filter away the salicylic acid. In the end, we got a few milliliters of this orange oil, which smells like methyl salicylate very strongly. So I think this is still mostly our product, I just don't know where the weird pink, purple, orange contamination comes from. If I had more product, I could have maybe distilled it to get it very pure, but since I was only a tiny amount, I decided to store it like this, with a nice label and a shitty color. I just wanted to say thanks to everyone, because the last two videos performed very well, making quite a few thousand views each. So this means I'm now at 3500 watch hours out of the 4000 you need to get monetized. So this is amazing news. Anyway, that was all for this small video and I'll see y'all next time for probably more organic chemistry.